So Insta360 has three picture profiles. You have the standard picture profile, which makes the videos look good straight out of the camera. Then you have the vivid picture profile, which is way too saturated and way too contrasty for my taste. And then the third one is the lock picture profile. And that's what we'll be talking about today. I'm gonna show you how you can color grade it to get the most out of your Insta360 camera. So let's go. So last weekend I was at our Archery's National Practice Session and I was a part of a photography workshop and we were taking a bunch of photographs over there and it was a very bleak day and I managed to get some Insta360 footage as well as some Insta360 photos. And then later on in the evening we went to photograph the finals of the Women Volleyball National Championship and it's always interesting to photograph women playing volleyball. But it was an indoor event and it was very dark and the light was of course missing in action so therefore using a small sensor camera like this is going to be a big difficulty. So I have these two very different scenarios and both of them were shot with the Insta360 log. So let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna show you how you can get around and get some nice looking, you know, strong contrasty images out of it. So here I have the files already exported from the Insta360 app and these were all exported in 4K resolution with the H.264 codec with the max bandwidth. Now I'm not really sure if, if I was to use ProRes uh, that that would be any better, it would just be easier on my computer to edit. But this time I went with a compressed file and as you can see all the video looks very flat and desaturated so if I push this to full screen I mean, it's not a very flattering in terms of colors and contrast. And then if I switch to the indoor event, you can see over here that it's, well, it's, it's flat and desaturated and you can see that there is a lot of noise, especially in the corners. Now that's going to be difficult to get rid of. So I'll be dividing this edit into two parts. I'll be doing this in DaVinci Resolve. So first I'm going to do the whole color grade in a free version of DaVinci Resolve. And if you don't know, DaVinci Resolve is a professional, you know, editing color grading video software and it's completely free but you also have the full version which uses your graphics card a lot more the whole work process is faster and you have a bunch of very intelligent artificial um, effects that I'm going to use then in the second part of the edit so let me find first the hero shot so the shot where I have you know highlights shadows and colors all present I think this one is going to be okay I'm going to go to the colors tab and here I already have a color grade made so if I show you the end result it looks like this so before and after. Now I'm going to take you through all of this, I'm just going to reset everything and walk you through the mindset of color grading, well any sort of footage, because the key is to get very contrasty and saturated mid-tones, but still keep an eye on the shadows and the highlights. You want to preserve the detail as much as you can if you want to get the natural look. And this is where logarithmic image profiles come into play, because they mathematically logarithmatize the sensor data in order to squeeze in more information from the highlights and the shadows and the mid-tones into a compressed video bandwidth. Now don't worry if you didn't understand the word what I said, just remember that with log you have the most amount of detail recorded in the video and then you can choose whether you want to crush the blacks or blow out the highlights or do whatever you want. You have the flexibility. So first of all on the first node I'm going to name this one contrast and this is where I'll be controlling the contrast of the video. I'm going to use just four tools for this so the overall contrast you can see I can just bump this up and you can see what's happening here in the waveform the highlight lights go overboard on top and the shadows go down so I completely crushed the shadows and completely overblown the highlights but this is the tool that I'll be using as well as the separate controls for the shadows for the midtones and for the highlight so let me reset everything I'm going to apply a little of this contrast just to see where I am I'm going to keep an eye on the waveform and just lift up the highlights more so we can see now I'm starting to get detail in the clouds over here. Then I'm going to lower down the shadows almost to zero and this is where the difference between color grading any normal camera and an action camera comes into play because you want to have the dark areas well dark because that's where all the noise is hiding. And now finally I'm just going to bump up the midtones and play with the balance of all of these three. So I want to have a nice stretched waveform and that's it for the first note. So before and after. I brought back the contrast, the details in the highlights and I've lowered down the shadows to hide the noise. The next note is going to be the colors. So saturation and here I'm just going to bump up the saturation of the colors overall. So if I go to the max it's a little bit too much and if I go all the way down it's a black and white image. I'm going to go around 60 
in DaVinci Resolve. So now I have the color. So before and after. Now, if you don't know what these nodes are, these are effects that you apply one after the other, just like layers, one on top of the other. In DaVinci Resolve, you start on the left, which is the input, then you apply all of these effects, and then you have here the output. Now, you can apply everything into just one node, but then it would be hard to turn on and off each individual effect. The next thing, I need to correct the white balance because I was shooting with all auto settings, auto exposure, and auto white balancing, and I'm gonna do this before both of these. So I'm going to shift S to bring the node over here in front. So WB, white balance, and I'm going to just make it not this warm, not this cold, but just slightly warmer before and after, just a teeny tiny bit more warm. And then finally at the end, so Alt S to bring in another node, I'm going to add sharpening. So sharp, sharper, that's not okay. This time I got it right. <laughs> now very important when you're dealing with any sort of Insta or any action camera footage is that even though you have the sharpness set to low in your camera, videos are still going to be very sharp and just adding sharpness on a pixel level is going to enhance the noise. So let me show you what I mean. If I zoom in over here, you can see that the video file is already quite, well, it's quite sharp. It's, it, it, it has that digital sharpness and if I increase this like the, so it's just getting really really bad so instead what I'm going to do I'm going to increase the clarity or the sharpness on a more macro level so I'm going to do this by bumping up the mid-tone details. If I bump this up, you know, it's not that aggressive and it doesn't enhance the digital noise. And if you pay attention to the trees, just find a nice tree line over here. So if I go with, let's say 30, and if I then turn this off, you can see how much more detail I'm getting in the trees. On, off, on, off, right over here. Off, on, off, on. It's a very subtle change and you don't want to have the over sharpened action camera footage. As I said, it's already quite sharp. So if I then play this video forward a little bit, you can see how this looks. So without the color grade and with the color grade. Nice! Now all of this can be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve and it offers a lot more than I've just showed you here, but working with 8-bit action camera files is, is, is quite limiting as to what you can do. I mean, you can get really creative. I'm just trying to get the natural look out of the camera. But for those extra features, we need to dive into a more noisy situation. So I'm going to go into that indoor scene right over here. So I have the full edit over here. I started with the contrast just like we did before. Then I added saturation. Then I played with the white balance, making everything just a teeny tiny bit cooler. Then I added the sharpness just like we did before. And then there's these two extra nodes. The first one is the noise reduction, and this uses the DaVinci Resolve Studio full version graphics card, artificial intelligence, AI, whatever. Denoising and DaVinci Resolve is very powerful in this department. And then finally, I've added the motion blur, because if you don't add motion blur to video files that are shot with a shutter speed of you know, more than 1 50th of a second, then you get that really you know, smartphone looking, very choppy image, especially if you're going with 25 frames per second. It doesn't look cinematic and it's a wide angle shot so it's not going to be cinematic anyway but if you add the motion blur well then it's going to look more natural. Those 25 frames are going to be smeared and stitched together if you're doing any panning and it's just going to look cinematic. So first of all the noise reduction. So if I turn the noise reduction off and I zoom into the corner you can see how much digital noise is present. So it's 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 quite a noisy shot and then if I turn the denoiser on this is now with the denoiser, so without the denoiser, with the denoiser. I mean, it's quite a big difference. And more importantly than getting rid of all of the noise, I have to you know, pay attention to the central part of the frame where everything is less noisy, especially on an Insta camera, and it's brighter. So here I want to preserve the detail. So this is without the denoiser and this is with the denoiser. Now you can probably tell that the denoiser on creates a more sharp looking video. And the trick is to add the pixel sharpness on the same effect. That's what I do with my action camera video file. So for the the denoising you go over here and this is only available in the full version so like temporal denoising three frames and I just added you know five percent of the denoiser effect and then also I've added the pixel sharpness right over here if I play back I mean it's very difficult to notice but if you have your eye over here you can see that there's almost no noise and if I turn the denoiser off you can see how much you no know, 
vivid this thing over here again. And for the final touches, the motion blur. If I turn this guy on, so I just turn this guy on, I have now an equivalent motion blur of that 1 50th of a second. So if I show you right over here, you can see this guy is blurry and if I turn the motion blur off, he's sharp. So blurry, sharp, blurry, sharp. And this is also done in the same section where you have the denoiser, so it's right over here, but instead of this section you're working over here and typically I add the 30 percent of the motion blur and it's going to give you that nice look. Now as a better example let's go back outside and I'm going to show you this over here. Create another node, I'm going to copy, just click this one, copy, control C, control V to copy the motion blur. So without the motion blur as I'm panning, I mean it's it's you know, smartphone looking like. And then if I add the motion blur, it's going to be smoother. So if I freeze the frame, you can see these two guys are blurred out. And if I turn this off, everything is sharp. Now adding motion blur also hides a lot of the digital noise, especially if you have your camera moving around a lot. Therefore, any denoising isn't really that necessary. And if you're doing this outside, there's not going to be a lot of noise because the ISO is going to be lower. If you're using auto exposure and if you're manually exposing, well, then you have your full control. So anyway, let me know down in the comments if you like this video, if you found it interesting. If you have any comments or questions, also leave that down below. Hit the like button and consider subscribing if you're new. And then I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.